Welcome to Goggles Off. I'm Peter. And I'm Julian. And today we are going to be talking about whatever the hell we're talking about. Oh, right. Visual reminder. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Regarded as one of the seminal uh, first person shooters of all time. Uh huh. Right there with Doom and Wolfenstein 3D as one of the most influential games in the genre. And its influence, you know, is definitely still seen today. But um, obviously, uh, the, the purpose of this show is to determine whether or not the games from old are still as good or if we're just kind of BSing ourselves and excusing the flaws that were present in them. Mm -hmm. uh, Basically, it's about taking off the rose-tinted glasses, people. And in this context, Julian is the one who grew up with this game, and in all surprisingness, I did not. I didn't even play Doom or Wolfenstein 3D growing up. That may have something to do with me growing up in a Macintosh household, but in any case... <laughs> shelter. Ah, uh, shut your face. <laughs> so, recently, I played through the entire Doom campaign, all four episodes. Quake. Quake. What did I say? <laughs> Doom. Oh, they are not the same game. Yeah. I apologize. <laughs> so anyway, I played through the Quake, yeah. Quake campaign, all four episodes or chapters. How are they listed? Episodes. Actually. Episodes. Yeah. Okay. Episodes one through four. Didn't it, wasn't it the thing with Quake or Doom, <laughs> where they released each part of the game? On the internet or something like um, that? Well, the first episode was Shareware. Yeah. I believe Quake had a similar uh, function at the time where you, mm -hmm. you got the first episode for free. Right. And that was the demo. Mm hmm. Exactly. And then when you bought the, uh, the actual mm -hmm. standalone, you, yeah. you got the remaining three episodes. Now, in Doom's mm -hmm. case, it only came with three episodes. Mm -hmm. So you got the other two thirds of the game. But then later, they, um, when Ultimate Doom came out, they added a fourth episode. Right. Which was even mm -hmm. tougher and harder, and, right. it, and it kind of continued after the end of the game. Yeah, well, I think we might be getting a bit off topic. But <laughs> well, I mean, that's right. what the show's made for. Yeah, I know, and more importantly, they're all made by the same company, basically. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, all the, the point, same three guys, Yeah. right? What were the three developers responsible for all those games? Well, it's Software yeah. um, was was the developer. Mm -hmm. um, you had such uh, legendaries as... John Romero, yep. John Carmack. Uh -huh. um, you had Tom Hall for a lot of Quake's. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Doom's design. Yeah, uh, visual design or level design. Kind of like the main influence. Okay. I think, uh, going back, I mean, like, he actually left the team before the game was even made, but he helped kind of coalesce some of the stuff together. Oh, all right. Um, hmm. Uh, well, see, you go. Yeah, Sandy Peterson. Yeah. Uh, who worked on Doom also worked on Quake. Yeah. And his influence shines very much so. Uh -huh. uh, because the main distinguishing thing about Quake compared to any other game of its time, even with Doom, yes. was the fact that it's very, very Lovecrafty. Mm -hmm. And I don't yeah, say that I definitely as... definitely picked up on that. And I don't say that as hyperbole, because mm -hmm. like a lot of you know a lot of properties say that, oh, it's got big tentacle monsters. This is Lovecraft. <laughs> the strength no, of, it's hentai. Yeah, like, <laughs> I hate to compare it to Doom, because... Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're both first-person shooters made by the same company with minimal mm -hmm. stories and yep. reliance on atmosphere. Yeah, relatively minimal stories. See, both cutscenes at the end of each game are basically text boxes. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest here. Oh, yeah. Totally. Yeah. But uh, I hesitate to really compare them because they play very, very, very differently. Yeah, that's true. Um, In one, you can jump. <laughs> yeah, oh, wait. So. Can you? It's a very oh. minimal jump. Oh, a lot of quick swells are built around. Yeah. My forming. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh... <laughs> more so than Doom, and, and really any other first-person shooter at the time, Quake had a has, I should say, yeah. a, a strong focus on horror. Mm -hmm. It it has horror and atmosphere mm -hmm. over the shooty parts. That's true. And a lot of that has to do with the level setup, the enemy design, and especially the music. Not oh, so much the environments themselves, because they're very blocky basic kind of a things. I mean, you'll get a temple, you'll get what appears to be a craft spaceship, maybe, and I mean, a bit, that's about it. 
Yeah. It, it's basically all very geometric, but that's more to the game's benefit because it leaves plenty of opportunity for you to run and jump around like a maniac while being attacked by these horrible monsters from another dimension. And that's all the things that we yeah. don't recognize. Exactly. There's plenty of levels where the design is so abstracted. Uh huh. Yep. You're just kind of wandering around going, where the hell am I? Yeah, but and, other times it helps. <laughs> and uh -huh. and that's not necessarily bad. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, as we know, there's this big push today to make everything down to earth and relatable. And, and high res to the point where they're individually detailing pipes yeah. in a janitor's closet. <laughs> and it's like, even at the time, it's like really, really boring to do so. Yeah. But, you know, then you have Quake, which for some reason people don't even like this. Because, like, you mm -hmm. know, on a lot of other online reviews of Quake, they'll have this thing where... Well, it's so abstract, I can't tell what's going on. And they list that as a negative. I just thought that was a positive, because with the Lovecraft and Atmosphere, the yeah. dark, very brown levels, mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's very, very dingy, there's lots of black areas. Yeah, really, what Like, Sorry. really, it's it's a horror game, first and foremost. Yeah, and there's variety. There's, like, cathedral zones and this weird yeah. checkerboard level, I remember, where it's like a friggin' maze out of hell, but it also feels a bit like... Uh, uh, American McGee's Alice. Yeah. Yeah. Kind well, of a thing. It's funny to say because American mm -hmm. McGee also worked on Doom and Quake. Oh, there we freaking go again. In, in the abstractness shows. What the hell is his real name? It is his real name, actually. Was his parents hippies? Patriotic well, hippies? <laughs> well. <laughs> Email us in if you know who American McGee's parents are, personally. <laughs> Ask him what the hell his problem is. Yeah. What's happening? Are you mad? I'm not mad. Rabbit. That's not right. What's he doing? Is something wrong? Anyway. Uh, but, um... I just can't believe that people would actually say that as a mm -hmm. negative, though, because yeah. I just wandering around the levels wanting to see what was behind it every, every corner. Every dark yeah. corner, every corner. I was scared out of my mind at several points, too. Mm -hmm. Because cause the enemies were just so in your face. Yeah. And it's much different than other first-person shooters at the time, which would just... Uh, kind of swarm you with lots of low hit point enemies, and you have mm -hmm. the machine gun to just you know, yeah, mow them all down. Mow them all down. Yeah, Quake has fewer enemies than most other games at the time, mm -hmm. but they absorb more damage. Yeah, does it, that have to do with the fact that they couldn't render that many three D polygonal models? Though, was that a technological it choice? It must have. It must have been. Yeah, because you it's know, still intense. At no the mistake. time, this yeah. was one of the very first. Three, uh, fully 3D games. Mm -hmm. um, not the first. Yeah. Uh, there was a game called Genwar that came out six mm -hmm. months beforehand. Yeah. Um, but Quake was one of the first, and certainly the most popular one to do so. Yeah. And, um, there was also was, a Battle Zone, which was kind of cheating in any case, but yeah. still fun. And, and, and at that point, considering mm -hmm. that they're you know exploring uncharted territory with yeah. with the graphics. Yeah. You can imagine that they can't really take chances with mm -hmm. how much stuff can be put on screen. Yeah. So it's a design choice. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people don't like the fact that a lot of the enemies are more or less just bullet sponges. Uh, <laughs> God, are they ever. The you ogre, get the biggest gun in the game and they'll still take three hits or something. The the ogres are a prime example of this. Which one of the ogres? The ones yeah, with the grenade launcher arms? Yeah. And, that, those and guys are she, so awesome. <laughs> Oh, they're great, but yeah. when you have, like, five in a run, you've got the super shotgun, and each one takes, like, two or three shots to kill, it's uh, like, okay, I'm strafing around for the next 30 seconds. Yeah, you can try and get them like, to hit know. each other, maybe, but then you're going to be taking damage, too, no matter what, because yeah. they shoot so fast and so often, and how do they even know you're there when they've got the burlap sacks on their goddamn heads? It's, it's, a, it's, what, it's, daredevil? it's, it, <laughs> it's, it's abstract, bro. You, you gotta just like. Oh, I'm sorry. They're psychic, then. <laughs> you look at the design and you go, "Okay, I'm I'm gonna roll with it." Yeah. Because if you try to figure out too much stuff, given the atmosphere of the game, it's just not gonna work. Yeah. Well, you certainly can't think about this while they're in the room with you because you're spending all your time dodging and weaving and praying for your life. Oh yeah. Uh, and, and this is the biggest strength of the game. Or combat. weakness. <laughs> no, I would I would say strength. Yeah. Well, you know, I wouldn't claim yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, But, um, the biggest strength of the game is that mm -hmm. the combat at any range is frantic. Yeah, that's true. I said that a lot of the enemies are very in-your-face, and that adds to it. Mm. Uh, there's yeah, sections Especially where... the eyeball blobs. What are yeah. they called again? The, uh, spawns. The... Wait, that's what they're called? I thought they were called, like, some Lovecraftian name, like the, uh, 
the, the whatevers. I don't know. There's so many bullets. <laughs> the black things that are bouncing around in high speeds, right? Yeah, those yeah. are the spawns. They're the, based off the Shoguts. That's what I. Yes. That's what I was thinking of. They're, yeah. They're based off, but the instruction manual just calls them spawns. Is Shogoth copyright? I, I don't know, because a lot of Lovecraft stuff is in very disputed waters over yeah. copyright. I remember Eternal Darkness mentioning a Shogoth at some point. Yeah. Maybe not? I don't know. Well, uh, the world changed in the uh, six years between games, mm -hmm. presumably. But, uh, um, you know, like, there, there are sections where you're mobbed by zombies, and mm -hmm. it's so dark you can't even tell what's going on. Yeah, there, and there's all you those hear, little you know, grab guys. Yeah, with... You know, with your headphones on, because mm -hmm. really, in the dark, headphones is how this game should be played. Yeah, and I definitely played it that way, let no mistake. And this game is plenty atmospheric, and yeah. stuff like that. But, there, you, you hear that in mm -hmm. every ear, Yeah. But the zombies moans, you've got ammo running low, mm -hmm. there's genuine panic right. on, on the part of the player at that point. Yeah, it's, there was. It's, <laughs> it's almost claustrophobic <laughs> in a way, because a lot of the level design is like very tight corridors yeah. in, in some areas. Oh yeah, and this like, game it'll open into mm -hmm. it'll open into more open spaces, but a lot of it's corridor running. Yeah, and, like when you have a death knight charging you in both directions, it's oh, like, oh god, holy oh, shit, what do I do? Uh, uh, who, who do I shoot? What weapon do I pick? And that's yeah. the fear that the game thrives on. Just a split second. Okay, now here's uh, enemies all over you. Yeah, it does force right. you to strategize an awful lot, and that is to the game's credit, I suppose. But. Yeah. This is a game where the autosave function is your absolute friend. The friggin' fast save button, just be sure to have it clearly labeled with like a little post-it arrow or something like that, because you'll be hitting that key like it's nobody's business, especially yeah. on hard and insane difficulty. There's a few oh levels. My god. There's a few levels where the enemies become really bull. Oh my um, god, it's so much shit of bull. Of a particular note uh -huh. is um, one of the last uh, levels of the game, mm -hmm. Azure Agony. Where the entire level is like almost nothing but spots. Yeah. Oh. Oh. It's like, there's a word that game. There's like, there's, that level. there's a pitch black corridors everywhere. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And these guys are around every single freaking corner. And they're all dark covered. And they just jump oh, at you in one leap. It's even yep. worse than the friggin' head crab monster things, whatever they're called. If any of you fans have played like Series Sam or anything like that with the Kamikazes, imagine oh, the Kamikaze is so awesome. about as big as a <laughs> basically like overgrown cannonball, right? You know, yeah, not, it's like a lion. <laughs> not not very huge, uh -huh. but just big enough that you could see easily. Mm -hmm. Now imagine that covered in black textures against a black background, uh -huh. moving around at high speeds and trying to throw itself at you. And if it hits, you take as much damage as a rocket blast. Uh, now imagine. And like then there could be single. more of them. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Enjoy your level. First <laughs> level ever. <laughs> After firing the mail gun, your opponent will hear the scream of galvanized steel. Steel. Splitting the air at tremendous velocity. Hear him suck his last breath. It is safe to stop the firing. Ah, uh, what else to talk about? What? The music, done uh, by Nine Inch Nails. Yes. Uh, uh, and I was not really a fan of growing up, albeit I didn't really listen to them except that one track on Crazy Taxi, which I played all the freaking time. Did so, you have a track on Crazy Taxi? I thought they did. Okay, the music uh, is done by Nine Inch Nails. Yeah. That is true. Yes. <laughs> that is anyway. true, and it's very, 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 very good. I enjoy it a lot. Uh, it's it, it's it's just really, really dark. Yeah, it sets the mood perfectly. It's it, it's mostly dark ambience. A lot of it mm -hmm. doesn't have a rhythm. There's no yeah. or anything with it. If you've never really listened to Nine Inch Nails before like I haven't, it's still good, yeah. which is excellent. Oh, it, so. it's... It, even as a Nine Inch Nails fan, it's mm -hmm. so different from a lot of his other stuff. Because like, yeah. they were like a rock band at the time with heavy electronic elements. Yeah. But this one is just ambience and and, mm -hmm. and, and uh, dark ambience. Well, too. there's still that track at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> at the opening Wh menu. Which is super compressed guitars and it's a mm -hmm. you up. And then yeah. it goes into the segue of screaming and just loops. And you've got the string pad underneath it, which yeah. is totally obvious. And you're like... yeah. I thought this could be action packed, now what the hell am I in for? Yeah. And that already sets the mood for the mm -hmm. game as you really don't know what's gonna happen, but you wanna keep playing to find out. Mm-hmm. And you know what? You're right. 
that is exactly the tone. You nailed it. Yeah. You want to keep playing no matter what unknowable horror lies around each corner. And there is plenty of that. Uh, except when it comes to maybe the boss fights. The first one was good. No mistake. The next couple weren't Really? I do remember yeah. level three with the spider queens? What are they called? Shamblers? Shamblers, yeah. Oh, with the three... oh. You... No, 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 not the, the shamblers. The, um, I think they're called driders. Yeah, they got yes. the three legs. Yeah. And they fire homing attack purple things at you. And I oh, hate I them hate so much. I hate those things. Oh, and they're so creepy, too. There's a, the character design in this game is almost beyond reproach. Yes. Some of the generic human guys can be a bit predictable and they're very similar to the zombies in Doom. But yeah. the other character designs are very inspired. Even if I can relate to other things like I was talking about the shamblers looking like head crabs kind of. And yeah. then we got the zombie guys with the chainsaw arms is yeah. like the Hulk meets Ash from yep. Eternal Darkness. Uh, uh, no, the, sorry. <laughs> Army of Darkness. Darkness. Uh, I've got Lovecraft on the mind. The ogres. Yeah. Um, spawns. Uh-huh. Uh, and, and, you know, once again, the abstract mm -hmm. just comes out because you have, the, you know, you have these chainsaw and grenade wielding, uh, big fat dudes. Yeah. You have medieval knights with swords who just run Oh, yeah. How could I down. forget the death, dread knights or death knights yep. or yep. D-word knights? <laughs> death knights. Okay. You have the, uh, spider women who just chuck homing missiles oh. at you. Mostly. You have zombies. Need to me. Yep. <laughs> which, which, who you can only kill if you yep. blow them the hell up. You have, logic. <laughs> you have the Shamblers, which I would describe as a cross between a Wampa and something that just shoots electricity. Uh, Raiden? <laughs> kind Raiden? Of, Raiden kind of, Yeti? Yeah. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you get up to in your spare time, Raiden? Are you knocking up Yetis? <laughs> it's, uh, it's, just, it's just so bizarre, but uh, like again, it, it just makes you want to see more of it. It's and true. <laughs> I wish there was more, almost. Maybe that's the game's credit. It leaves you wanting more. It does space it out, kind of. Yeah. Even the, because the Spider Queens totally come in in the third episode. Yeah. Which is good. And that's good uh, That's good design, I think. And they did, again, they did the most with what they had. Yeah. They, they probably had plenty of designs for other enemies that they wanted to put in, but they couldn't just because of the technology at the time. It feels like that, too. It feels yeah. like I could see a couple more mm -hmm. things coming here. I can certainly see better boss fights. <laughs> yeah. What was the last one again? Um, Describe Shim, it for me. <laughs> Shim Nugarath, where you have to telefrag him, and the game gives you no indication. Oh, yeah. Uh, <sighs> spoilers. Yeah. Oh, whatever. But uh, You can look it up on YouTube. The final boss, you actually have to telefrag. Yep. And the game gives you no indication of this. Yeah, it and gives you a little orb that's floating around in the in this little lava chamber with an island and a big organic whatever in the middle. Yeah. And, and if you tire it right, you fall into the lava and die. Yeah. <laughs> or, or, or at the very least, get very damaged. And, and what exactly is it shooting the orb, right? <laughs> it's, or, yeah, it, it shoots the orb, which creates enemies. No. Wait, what? <laughs> God, it's, I just played this and I can't remember what you're supposed to do. You told me. Well, no, you have to wait till the orb gets in, into Shimnugaroth and, and then you want the portal. That's what it is, the and, portal. And then it makes it explode. <laughs> and then it ends with a freaking text box. Yeah. With your guy standing triumphant going something like this. It's like, you won the game. <laughs> Congrats. Uh huh. At least it wasn't Ghostbusters on NES. <laughs> Congratulations, now go and rest our heroes. Yeah. <laughs> it is one of the classic video games end endings where it doesn't, mm -hmm. it just kind of stops. Yeah. And it's certainly the most disappointing part of the game, I felt. And, yeah. And, and that's really like the only complaint I had about the game was that yeah. the boss was so lackluster. And I completely agree. And I don't really know the details of the development, but mm -hmm. having played so many games and had development issues, Especially as twisted around as Quake's development was. Yeah. It really felt like they hit a point where they said to themselves, we have to throw something as the final boss. So let's, just, <laughs> let's, just, let's just mess around with portals. Yeah, it really does feel like And then there was minute. the final boss fight. Mm -hmm. It really feels like a slapdash yeah. kind of effort. They threw all their energy into the first boss fight with the giant boss in the middle of the lake of lava. Yeah. Except they didn't quite throw as much effort into figuring out a clever way to beat him, except for press these buttons yeah. and things happen. <laughs> Run on the four tiles. Uh, yeah, pretty much. So and how many times do you have to do that again? Three, I think. Uh, does it vary with difficulty? I don't think so. Yeah. But like, you know, he will chuck fireballs at you. With, with more damage or something? Yeah. yeah. So, like, 
you know, like there's the pressure to succeed at, at that point, but yeah. uh, uh, you know. But positives about the game. All the secrets. Yes. Yeah, it, and they make it fun, like mm -hmm. a good game should. <laughs> it's true, it's software fashion. There's mm -hmm. a lot of secrets and exploration involved. Yeah, and in in uh, the context of taking everything that Doom did and turning it up to 11, <laughs> it's, this basically is Doom done even better, kind of, in a way. They even more gameplay, so. Because uh, in Doom, yeah. you have the ability to shoot anybody anywhere. In this one, you can do that too, and jump. And you've got bouncing grenades and other fun. Oh, yeah. And also, you've got more intense music. You've got more awesome backgrounds. Everything's actually polygonal. And more importantly, instead of humping the wall for secrets, you freaking shoot them. Yes. And you shoot all the buttons. You shoot everything, basically. That is your method of interacting with the world. All gunfire based. <laughs> Action packed. Yeah. And uh, it's great. It's yeah. freaking awesome. It's Actually, also, it's yeah. almost a gameplay thing, because you don't want to waste ammo just shooting around trying to find the secrets. You have to use precision. Yeah. Because you will need that for the enemies, because again, they are bullet sponges. <laughs> they are goddamn bullet sponges. Oh, but well, that's what you have the shotgun uh, for, because it has yeah. different ammo texture. Yeah. They give you plenty of shotgun shells, don't they? I guess instead of wall humping, it's mm -hmm. wall shooting. That's yeah. your wall shooting gun. Yeah. Does that, does the freaking axe work on that too, or do you need to use a gun? I think the axe works because it counts as an attack. If right. there's any fans who can confirm this, mm -hmm. you don't want to know, but yeah, I well, think it does. I just never really use the axe because yeah, if going... you're using the axe, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> uh, it's basically you're spraying bullets everywhere with no regard to accuracy. And if you're using the axe, you're pretty much after. Yeah. You're dead. It's Those like, guys are going to kill you. Yeah, it's like... Uh... It's like the fist yeah. of doom. It's like your backup gun. It's yeah. It's, it's, it's not your mainstay. No, certainly not. But um, one of the things that actually struck me mm -hmm. um, the level design, yeah, was that it it does have a hidden genius in mm -hmm. some because the atmosphere gets really really dark and even oppressive at some points. Yeah, talk about the uh, zombie graveyard I've, because I've, that's your favorite. I was part actually of that. just about to say. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, one thing I was, I was playing the game was that. Episode 4, Mission 3, The mm -hmm. Elder God Shrine. There's a section where uh, there's a miniature graveyard with headstones. Yeah. And straight in the middle of the level, and there's no explanation given, mm -hmm. there's no real other uh, down-to-earth parts of the level, because it's all like this mm -hmm. big stone castle that you're running around with. Yeah. Kind of, I can kind see of open other... areas swarm with zombies. It's all mm -hmm. dark and horrible. I can but see like, other yeah. games where they would have like a little plaque with a text box for you to read. They say, yeah. this is the grave site of such and such a battle. It's been cursed or whatever. Yeah. No yeah. explanation. Yeah. But right here, there's just this random graveyard in the mm -hmm. middle of everything else going on. And it's the one kind of island of familiarity. Yeah, you're in a graveyard, basically. And it creeps the hell out of me. Because it, it, it's a very human-looking uh, design, really. Mm-hmm. With plenty of humanoid zombies. Not Smack dab in the middle of an incredibly inhuman and uh, unfigural, outable yeah. level design. More importantly, doesn't it have? Isn't this one of the levels with the purple sky? Yeah. Oh, they all do. Yeah. Exactly, and it's yeah. tight and it's claustrophobic. Yeah. So, which limits your use yeah. of the grenades because. Again, that's usually the way yeah. you want to kill these guys. But if you bounce them incorrectly, you're going to kill yourself. Which yeah. makes things doubly tense. And on top of the triply tense situation. Yeah. Oh, boy. And it just got me wondering. It's like, uh, what the hell are these doing here? Mm -hmm. Whose gravestones are these? Yeah. Are there any survivors? You know, anything like that? Because, like, the Quake's backstory being vague as it is, yeah. there's a lot of inference we can do. And one of the strengths we have as humans is inference from our environment. Yeah. Because that's pattern what... recognition. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you get this very humanoid looking object in the middle of a very inhuman area. Yeah. And it, and it just sparks your interest and then, mm -hmm. to me, made it even more nightmarish. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, combine that with, like, the sky, there's two cloud patterns that go in, that can go in opposite directions yeah. at different speeds. It's the simplest kind of cloud pattern you can do. And yet, because it's purple and because it's so weird. It works. Yes. It works incredibly well. 
it adds so much to yeah. the otherworldly atmosphere. Yeah. Because like you really get the sensation that you know like you're this one ranger mm -hmm. going through the dark portal into these horrible alternate worlds. Yeah. And each one gets like steadily more and more worse as you go on. Mm -hmm. And after a while, it really unnerves you. Yeah. And this was one of the prime examples of like how good the world design is. Something as simple as a couple of headstones creeped me out to the point where I was sitting there going, "What the hell is this doing here?" You know, and, and then granted, like, oh, zombies around me, you know, I couldn't spend all day in the area. But it's just, like, little moments like that mm -hmm. in the game that just spark your imagination. Yeah. More and there's plenty of it, too. Yeah. And, in fact, wasn't that, like, the closing, like, little frame at the end of the level? It, yeah. Because every level ends with a tally of all the enemies who let live, how long it took you, and how many secrets you found. Classic video game stuff. Yeah. Especially in a game where it's all about secrets and enemies and yeah. just running through as fast as you can. <laughs> and, so, yeah, and yeah. the closing image is mm -hmm. is the little camera view of that area. Too. Yeah, exactly. So even if you miss it for some reason, you know, like you still get the full view of it mm -hmm. uh, after, the, after the end. Yeah, it's like, hey, you missed all these guys. Yeah. Do better next time. Be more of a vicious psychopath. <laughs> yeah. But who who's the Quake guy? Because you've got Doom guy, who we know an, an adequate amount about. He's this soldier on Mars, and hell opens up, and then you kill everything. Yeah. Who's Quake Guy? Uh, he's known as Quake Ranger. Quake Ranger. Yeah, okay. or, or or Quake Guy, or even the Ranger. Okay. Basically, Quake Story is just like... Oh, so he's uh, not like alien. Airborne. No, alien forces invade. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, the Earth government make, makes this portal to go into the other side and kill the boss that's controlling everything. Oh, sounds Every, like Oblivion. Everyone dies, uh -huh. except for you. And, <laughs> and you have to Everybody go, on Earth? It's not said, and given the Ooh. sheer abstractness of the game, it wouldn't yeah. surprise me. I, I, I can see that being a thing. Yeah. And if it isn't, it should. I think the instruction manual does state that like you are mm -hmm. the only survivor of your platoon. Oh, or, or okay, just your platoon. Yeah, yeah. Well, that but like, the zombies but given the sheer bizarreness of the game, yeah. you know, like that wouldn't surprise me at all. Like, everyone's just long dead. Mm-hmm. You're the only one left in everything ever, which, considering <laughs> how big a fan the developers were of H.P. Lovecraft, mm -hmm. it was Is this all of them? Uh, maybe not all of them, all of them, but yeah, if you John Romero, still, maybe. Well, John Romero and Sandy Peterson. Okay. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And Sandy Peterson, by the way, mm -hmm. um, was one of the designers for the for the tabletop game Call of Cthulhu. Ah, which, okay. which which I think he made after he left in software uh -huh. after Quake. Okay, so so the influence is there. It's like that dark, twisted permeance, mm. uh, which can you know, be of, very very satisfying <laughs> of everything. It wouldn't yeah. surprise me if that is how things actually go down. Yeah. You're the only human left, mm -hmm. and now you're just trapped in this dimension, killing everything ever. Yeah, scary much. scary thought, but that would fit the game perfectly. But you know, yeah. again, you're not given any. Any information. I like my dark, kind of depressing dramas sometimes, like yeah. your Brazils or you know, basically anything done by Terry Gilliam. Oh yeah, <laughs> I yeah. love his. I love his style. <laughs> He's yeah. a freaking bomb. And given the Lovecraftian mm -hmm. nature of the game, it would fit perfectly. Yeah, exactly. But um, uh, maybe that's the whole point because we talked about how limited everything is and how abstract it was as a result, and how few enemies there are, and yeah. yet they're stronger. And all this, you know, the music was compressed, and so it sounds very, very kind of weird and unsettling yeah. in some aspects, especially that, was it Steal Your Soul? I believe is oh, the, oh, the track the, name. Oh, uh, the one called The Whispering on it? Yes, it? exactly. And I can almost swear there's a part in that, in that track where the game tells me to go f*** <laughs> myself. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> well, uh, thanks, dead grandma. <laughs> Maybe you should take the hint. Uh, I'm not that bad. <laughs> I only had to reload this level six times because I kept forgetting the quick save button. <laughs> Come on, give me a break. It's not hard. Yeah, well, it wasn't my fault. I was all intrigued by that little hidden portal in the level select. Frank Reisner has quite the sense of humor. <laughs> Why would you put that in, like, the little weird, watery divider where you drop down and you, and you catch a glimpse of, like, a little hidden portal? 
and you're like, ooh, what is this? Now the game is in insanity mode, or whatever it's called. Oh, great. Yeah, and you go into the next level, get shotgun by one zombie, and you're dead. It's, it oh it all serves the gameplay. You know, it's, it's, it's very classic. Yeah. The layout serves the gameplay first, and, yeah. then it, and then it's designed to actually make sense. Mm. In Quake, you know, and with Doom, and even games like GoldenEye, mm -hmm. the level design didn't really make sense at a literal level, but mm -hmm. we didn't mind because it was interesting enough that we wanted to go through. Yeah, Nowadays, it's all true. linear hallways and streets uh, where, like, you, yeah. you get a visual sense of, you know, okay, mm -hmm. this is a city street with cars in the middle of it that uses cover. Yeah, and you're always on a friggin' overpass yeah. or a blocked-off section of a throughway or yeah. whatever. If now, like, this cool, game yeah. makes you go through every single hallway. It's a game that encourages you to explore. Yes. And you... And... It could be a secret around the next corner, or it could almost definitely be an enemy, which, you know, usually my response as somebody who never played a game this fast-paced, is the running permanently on, or is there an option to, like, have there's pull down option. a run button? Uh, there's an option. I never turn it on because the game is so yeah. fast-paced. In fact, I think when you told me... Time you know, takes away from it. Yeah, when you told me when, you, when I was first playing the game, you told me to set that function on because there's no point at which I'm never not going to want to run. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, the environments are so suited for it, because yeah. e e even in those long corridors, mm -hmm. they're long, so like you get the chance like uh, bunny hop around. And yeah, or run ahead. past your enemy. Yeah. yeah. Oftentimes when you're trying to hop across those little platforms to skip to the next level, your best choice is to just run and jump, because they're perfectly spaced for that. Exact kind of jump. Exactly. There's which no is, point to not run. Which is a good way to show off the controls. Yeah, I guess. And it does feel very smooth once you get used to it, which takes a little bit of time. But by the time of the second episode, I was running and rocket jumping like it was nobody's business. Oh, oh yeah. By the time you yeah. get to that, mm -hmm. and you should, because mm -hmm. that's where the difficulty starts to spike. Yeah, except there is one out. <laughs> the AI. <laughs> yeah, the AI is... Kind of dumb. I don't think that's a detriment, though, because the enemies mm. are supposed to be these kind of generic, kind of ghouls. That's true, but... They're not human soldier. Well, actually, some of the commando guys... You kind think, of are human, but they're not. Yeah, what about the Blood Knights and the Death yeah. Knights and stuff like that? Yeah. You'd think a melee enemy wouldn't stop around a corner or away from a corner every time you get out of their field of view. Yeah. You'd think they'd just keep running at you, and, you know, just, if they had that difference in AI behavior, that'd be nice. Was that your main complaint, though, just the AI? Uh, mainly, yeah. I want more guys that actually chase me after I escape their field of view. Yeah. They don't instantly forget about me. I, I didn't mind the AI too, mm -hmm. too much. You know, because I'm just used to games with very simplistic AI. Yeah. And at that point, I mean, let's be honest, the focus was on the graphic side of things, so I don't blame them too much. Well, I understand that, but it breaks up the pace. Yeah. I mean, granted, you don't want everything to be, you know, guys coming after you, but I want it to feel earned. Like, okay, I've just cleared out this room, I can take a quick pause. Not, okay, I just ran around this corner with no barrier, I can take a pause. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? I mean, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I don't necessarily feel like I was. it was lacking in that department. Uh, I'm not this saying it's is... lacking. I'm just saying it would have been better. Yeah. It would have, in hindsight. And, and that's the that's what this whole thing is about. It's like tearing down, tearing down yeah. things. And granted, I'm criticizing these guys who were working with a lot of limitations and stuff like that. Probably had a friggin' deadline. Everyone knows how much fun that freaking is. And all in all, I think the, what is it, art comes from attrition, I believe that is the phrase. Yeah. Or at least it comes from limitations. And I believe it, yeah. Mm -hmm. I absolutely believe it. And with this game, I think it's definitely worth checking out in spite of its 
relatively minor flaws, I would say, like the AI and uh, the some final th- boss fight. Yes, the final boss that was, fight. <laughs> that was my main complaint. Yeah. Um, final boss is very, very underwhelming. Mm-hmm. But I want to stress to, uh, to our viewers that that is one level mm-hmm. over the course of really God, how many? Around like twenty. Yeah, no kidding. 20, 25, whatever it is. And they are not short. There is a lot to talk about. We're just barely touching the surface. There's that one where you have to extend a bunch of bridges and this giant yeah. obelisk-like tower. You already mentioned the grave with the zombies. There's, 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 there's one of the secret levels, oh, which has even, reduced gravity. Yeah, you, you, we didn't even talk about the friggin' flying vipers. Yeah. Whatever those things are, the ghosts. Or, the uh, torsos that shoot. Yeah, the friggin' yeah, gas bags. Happy. Or whatever they're called. Yeah. Well, it's interesting though because like the game's incoherence becomes mm-hmm. incoherence all, all of its own. Yeah, it's a weird vision. It's something you haven't seen before, but in a way, it does seem coherent. It seems like it was all thought up side by side. They weren't independently thought up ideas all thrown together in a freaking mishmash. These guys were. Yeah. Everything blends together quite seamlessly, and it becomes its own tone even in spite of obvious Lovecraftian vibes and stuff like that. This doesn't yeah. feel overtly Lovecraftian. It very much feels like its own thing, yeah. its own idea. It, it, it doesn't and, feel constrained yeah. by any desire to meet that label. It just says, mm-hmm. we've got these influences, they work in, in the game's favor, mm-hmm. but it's it's also a lot like Doom, it's a lot like other first-person shooters. It's action-packed. It's not mm-hmm. all just running around scared out of your fucking wits trying uh, trying to survive. It's not a point-and-click adventure game where yeah. you're like, oh, reading the obvious Mountains of Madness reference. Oh, God, yeah. there's, a, there's a monster behind you. Quick, combine this item and this item. Yeah. And save yourself. Oh, I'm in the snow level. There's weird things in the distance. I <laughs> wonder what those could be. It's not, <laughs> it really does take the formula for its own benefit. Mm-hmm. Um, the influence is there, but it, it's an influence. It's not a direct design yeah, it's not a copycat cop out. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, uh, copy. It's a I perfect. It's a it's a frappe blend, is what it is, okay. and it is a glorious and terrifying adrenaline pumping smoothie, is what this game is. That describes it pretty well, as a matter of mm. fact. It's terrifying. It's action packed. Yep. It's intense and quiet, and as you learn <laughs> to play the game, you'll realize that you'll fear the quiet moments. As much as you fear the intense moments, uh-huh. nice. and that, and that's something that a lot of games don't really get right. No, uh, they're very choreographed. They're very over the top. Quake just throws things at you, and it's you're all... expected to just mm-hmm. meet them and greet them, really, mm-hmm. and yes. and you have to adapt. It's all organic, yeah, very organic, organic terror. Heck. No, no yeah. quick time cutscenes here, baby. <laughs> One thing that I would like to mention to the audience is that we did not cover the multiplayer section because multiplayer we just didn't play it. Okay, there we go. No, yeah. we really didn't. Um, ah, well, there we go. Yeah, Quake had stuff like Team Deathmatch, Capture the Flag. Oh well, it was the first game of its kind to do so too. It wasn't. Uh, was, didn't this? Oops. It was also one of the most influential shooters for multiplayer too, because the original Team Fortress derives from. Quake. Yeah, I was about to ask you about that. Yes, uh, Team Fortress 1 was a Quake mod, uh, and then Team Fortress 2, as we all know, is the multi-million dollar oh boy. first-person shooter behemoth hat box <laughs> that it is today. <laughs> it's interesting because it, it kind of owes up mm-hmm. to its roots a little bit, because one of the soldier's weapons is the Quake rocket launcher. Oh boy. So it's acknowledging, I... <laughs> so it's acknowledging the past which, in a way that I thought was kind of cool. And I played that game before I played Quake. I got that weapon before I got Quake, and I only found out immediately after acquiring it that that's what that came from. <laughs> so just, there we freaking go. What is this brown turt my character's holding? Yeah, and why is he holding it under his legs? <laughs> yeah, yeah, why is he holding it set? Yeah, why is it... Oh, crotch rocket. <laughs> oh. The blowback just burns all through his chest. All right. So one of things like they don't acknowledge in video games is how mm-hmm. awkward that perspective is, but at the time it worked, because that was before yeah. the weapons were... Off centered. No, uh, it's before realism came in and ruined everything. Yeah. Introducing Quake for the N64, now with a two player deathmatch. 
Maybe when the war shines. That's for good measures. So after we have retroactively uh, looked at the beautiful sunshine coming out of John Romero's ass, would you still recommend Quake? I think the answer is kind of obvious. Um, mm -hmm. I absolutely would. Yeah? I would recommend it to anybody who likes to play first-person shooters, Yeah. anyone who likes horror games, anyone who really, really is a fan of video games at all. Yeah. Especially if you're a first-person shooter fan. I, I think you owe it to yourself to play this. Yeah, required reading kind of a thing if you're uh, if you're a shooter guy and you've kind never of, played it. Kind of, uh, kind of, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would agree. I think there's an awful lot of design elements in now in newer games that came from this game, and this game actually does them far better. Thank you all for tuning in, and next time. We forced Julian to play a wonderful, horrifying point-and-click adventure game. <laughs> well, it's always talking about golf. I guess you just uh, finished golf, so. Oh.